Hey guys, Nito King again, and I wanted to start Space Quest 2 by once again giving you the theme from the Apple IIGS version. Seriously, why didn't I do this version instead of the PC one? They got typing sounds. They got ambient music. They got broom sounds. Alright, I'm gonna ignore the beeping watch because we already know what comes out of that. Let's just get on with our mouse enabled movement. And that message goes by as fast as ever. Alright, now of course, there's one thing that everybody wanted me to do at the start of this game. No, really, I'm an idiot? How about you're an idiot? Look at that. Alright, so spitting with the space helmet on, not a good idea. Let's try that again. Alright, so that's a thing. Anyway, let's skip ahead to where we made Planetfall and Labion. A familiar twang. Yes, I'd better go check it out. Yeah, that's not the right spot. Uh... Dang it, I can never find the way east. Oh shoot, hide, hide, hide. Hide better. Okay, now I can go see what the little guy is up to. There he is, hanging from that tree like a pinata. Well, see you around. Actually, I should probably take the upper path first. Oh, no, forget it. Won't need the whistle as far as I'm getting in this game. We'll need a spore. Hey, what? How'd he get over there? That doesn't make any sense. I left him hanging from the tree. I must investigate. Hmm. 
Yeah, he's not there. I don't know if that counts as rescuing him or not, so I just went ahead and restored and never entered this screen. And made my way here. You may remember in the actual playthrough, those little guys jumped down from the rocks triumphantly and led me to their village. This time, they don't seem as happy to see me. Yeah, this is kind of the evil coal route. But somebody told me that there's a way you can sneak through that screen without them killing you and continue on with the game. So I might as well give that another try. Maybe I walk behind the rock here. Alright, so far so good. Yeah, I'll get it eventually. I give up. I don't think I'm going to be able to figure out how to get through there. So, down here, I didn't actually have to skip very much at all. In fact, I think this is a full recording from when I started swimming against the current here. As you notice, I'm not moving. But I'm still swimming against the current, and if you do that for, I don't know, a minute, it'll kill you. Yeah, it's just a warning. Make sure you're going along with the current, or you drown. One of the fastest deaths by timeout in the game, actually. So once we get through there, of course, everyone remembers this screen. This is where we blow the whistle to summon the Labion Terror Beast. And you might remember my interesting adventure with getting past him without giving him the puzzle from the video. Turns out that that's a very difficult way to do it, and there's a much easier way. Leave the screen, come back, and he's gone. That's the easy way. But it's not the fun way to get past him. I'm not making this up. This is actually a thing. Better yet, it's a free thing in case anyone wants to try it themselves. I think this theme sounds definitely a lot more Quest for Glory than it does Space Quest. Alright, the theme's repeating, so on with the game. Damn, I'm looking good. You rub your hands up and down your clothes. Talking to yourself is a sign of madness. The water still retains the odd luminescence it had in the lake you just waded in from. Plunk. Hey, find a bathroom. What? No, it was a rock. The water has no discernible smell. 
You take a good, deep chug of the glowing water. The risk of catastrophic organ failure never tasted so refreshing. Ah, refreshing. Wait, Keta, what? Who? I said yum. Back off, rock licker. Come on, just one more lick? Papa needs his happy time. Alright, that's enough of that. On with the actual point of the game. The grass here looks to have grown over small gouges in the earth, as if something keeps boring a small trench in the ground as it travels. It looks like your standard issue plunger. How did that get here? What the heck is that thing? And what's with this music? Uh-oh. Get ready to fight, Roger. What? So yeah, it's Roger versus the Le'Veon Terror Beast in a uh, Quest for Glory 2 style combat engine. As you can see, he's got three moves. He can claw at you, use that tornado spin, or spit poison. And you can thrust, swing, dodge, or block. And I think I'm going to lose this one because I'm way down. Oh boy, that hurt. Oh, lost this one. Oh well, nice to have a break. Alright, let's give that another try, shall we? Let's see if we can do a bit better than about half. What? Uh, what? You know, of course, you've got to have a good strategy for beating this guy. Generally, you'll need to dodge everything except possibly the claws, which you can block, but much better to dodge those, too. Of course, every time you get poisoned, it seems like you can't move for a couple seconds, which means you're going to get a lot more damage. Plus, the poison does sap your health. And the thrust takes longer than the swing, but it does about twice as much damage. So, use that whenever you've got a good opening. I think I got him this time. I'm a failure! And this fight is going nowhere. I'm a failure. <laughs> this time, I just completely fell apart and didn't manage to get anything done. Oh, the janitor lost. How original. How inspiring. How... How... Ah. <gasps> Well, managed to dodge one tornado anyway. Those will really mess you up. One interesting thing is that if you see him about to spit, you can hit him and stop him from spitting. This might be the comeback victory I've been waiting for. Oh, lost this one. Oh well, nice to have a break. <laughs> Pretty close now. One more hit. Ugh, I'm dead? Actually, I'm not surprised the way you were fighting back there. Yeah, that was about my best run yet. Ugh, lost this one. Oh well, nice to have a break. And that was about my worst. And if you let him get in with those claws, it'll just tear you apart. Oh, of course, I love the way that I just oh, well, collapse while he's standing there looking around from the poison. I'm starting to get the pattern here, at least. Oh, lost this one. Oh well, nice to have. Every time he just catches me off guard with that tornado. What? Alright, the winning run. 
The trick is, when you dodge his claw, you always get an opportunity to hit him with a swing, so go for it. And if you successfully dodge either the spit or the tornado move, then you've got time for a full thrust, but most of the time I just swing anyway, because I know that's going to work. And I just got really torn apart. No, watch your timing. Try to attack him whenever he spits poison, because the timing for dodging that is not as easy as it looks. Yeah, as you can see. And I think probably if you don't try to attack while you're poisoned, you might be able to dodge. One more swing should do it. And there we go. Ooh, Roger wins! Aha! Well done. Your unequaled skills with the plunger have vanquished the evil Labion Terror Beast. But your true adventure has yet to begin. Please insert disc two. Disc two? This was a digital download. There aren't any discs. Please mail any complaints to Gipazoid Novelty Company. Wait! What about me? The adventure continues in Space Quest II, Vohal's Revenge. See you there, Roger. What? That's taking forever. What am I gonna do while I wait? Hey, you, player, quick, find disc two. I don't want to be stuck in here forever. And that was Space Quest for Glory. A little something infamous adventures threw together as a preview of their upcoming Space Quest II VGA. Speaking of previews, you've previously seen me distract this guard by hiding behind the elevator and goading him into leaving the screen. And it turns out that if you just stand here and watch, he'll go all the way out of the screen. And if you don't want to ride up the elevator, you can always just follow him. And in further deaths by backtracking, you can ride right back down the elevator. That's a pretty gruesome one. I suppose you made it all the way up to Vohal's asteroid and either forgot to get the glass cutter or just don't think to use it. I cut out about 13 minutes of waiting before this scene started. So, speaking of that glass cutter, I decided not to bring it with me, just in case it was required for that death. It's not. So, no glass cutter in inventory. I don't feel like walking all the way back up and getting it, so it's time for debug mode. In debug mode, there's a lot of stuff you can do. I'm not going to show much of it off, just one Easter egg here. And after that, I'll just give myself the glass cutter, object 32. There it is. And now it's time to go deal with Vohal. Yeah, 
Yeah, whatever. Shut up, Vohal. I got a glass cutter. I'm coming for you now. So, supposing you're not stupid enough to fall off the stairs and actually manage to kill Vohal and stop the insurance salesman from launching, this next scene takes a very long time. And it's not kidding. It really does take almost 40 full minutes to do this. During which time, if you haven't figured out how to escape, you're just a complete dumbass. There's no other way to say it. Unfortunately, you can't just walk away and leave this scene to record because every five minutes one of these boxes pops up and you gotta clear it. I'm jumping ahead about five minutes at a time here. It's all for you guys. I sat here and waited through this for you. I hope you appreciate that. For whatever reason, it doesn't give you a box of 25 minutes, even though it did for 35. So we're about halfway through now. Yep, getting down to the wire. I think you've still got time to escape at this point. Probably cutting it pretty close. Really should have figured out how to escape by now. Nobody's ever going to do this unless they actually want to see what happens. And there's a familiar message. And finally, after all that waiting... Totally not worth it. But you know what is worth the wait? The next episode where I'll be showing you a couple of pretty neat things from Space Quest 3.